Dead nerds, I've been using GitHub Copilot this past year in order to speed up my Python coding workflow. So I'm gonna share my best practices for using this tool for a review. Now GitHub Copilot, not to be confused with this Copilot, is located right inside some of the most popular code editors. For me, it's VS Code. Anyway, this bad boy provides coding recommendations right here. And this is really great for below average coders, as now you don't have to have a separate ChatGPT window open when coding to show just how inferior you are to those senior developers. Hey, what are you looking at? Oh. Nothing. Now it's also great for those that know they're low performers, as it even comes with a chat interface to ask it your deepest, darkest questions, which you can quickly clear so your friends don't see. Now this past year, I built a Python web app from scratch, which, to be honest, I probably couldn't have done without the help of Copilot. I ran into a whole host of issues trying to integrate my app with a live SQL database. Turns out there's not a lot of documentation for this, and this AI tool saved my butt. And it's not only me fanboying this tool. In a bigger study, it was found that those that use this not only completed more tasks, but also completed them in less than half the time. Wowzers, look at that p-value. And it's not just a speed improvement. Apparently three out of four programs are finding more fulfillment, with some even claiming to find the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Now, I'd be remiss to mention that this has some major drawbacks, especially when used improperly. There's new data to support that we are starting to see a downward pressure on code quality due to these AI coding assistants. With this white paper specifically analyzing 150 million lines of code and showing an increase in code churn. And what the heck is this term? Well, I looked it up. And it's the percentage of lines that are reverted or updated less than two weeks after being authored. Oh, and this number is projected to double in 2024 compared to its 2021 pre-AI baseline. To put it nicely, with everyone feeling like they're living more fulfilled lives, they're becoming lazy AF with their coding and putting all that that these large language models learn from the internet into your code. But I have a few lessons on preventing this, hence why I made this video. Anyway, quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by GitHub Copilot or Microsoft, nor do they have any review, but it is supported by those of you that purchase my course certificates and notes. Specifically, I just launched my YouTube course, ChatGPT for Data Analytics, and it shows you everything you need to know in order to start analyzing data from day one and speed up your workflow. All right, enough of me yapping. Let's actually get into building a project with GitHub Copilot to show you how I code faster. Now, like any great chatbot these days, you're gonna have to pay money for it. I have a yearly subscription, pay $100 a year. However, it is free if you're a student. If you're using this for work with secure data, you need to cover your ass. With the Copilot business account, they're offering things like enterprise grade security, safety, and privacy. And with this, your boss now knows about it. And so if anything goes wrong, they'll get fired and not you. Once your account's set up, you can then install it within your editor. I don't like to pay for my product, nor am I a hardcore programmer, so I'm going with VS Code. In here, we have to enable it by going to extensions. There's two extensions you need to install. First is this one, which allows you to use it right within the text editor itself. The other extension is the chat extension, which basically provides ChatGPT along a side panel inside of here. After you install those extensions, it should walk you through the account setup, and you'll know you're connected by the status icon that you can title GitHub Copilot on or off. All right, we have GitHub Copilot chat on the left-hand side of the window, along with it working inside of a file. Now that it's all set up, let's actually get into building a project with Copilot. We're gonna be building a data analytics project from scratch. And we need three major things. First, a data set to actually analyze the data. Second, a Python notebook to show off to all your non-coded friends that you can do analysis with Python. And third, a readme to summarize all your results for the data set first. We could have ChatGPT generate this data set, but I'm gonna shamelessly plug my own data set that you can get here for free. Anyway, this has key details about data analyst job postings through around the US. So in my new project, I'm gonna drag and drop that new data set into here. So we have our data set, now we need to move into our analysis. Using a slash command, I'm gonna go ahead and generate a new notebook. I'm also gonna add some key information to connect to the data set, along with performing some exploratory data analysis. Before creating the notebook, it prompts me with a list of steps that it's gonna be walking through in order to generate this. These all look good to me, so I'm gonna say create notebook. All right, not gonna lie, this is pretty good. It generates a pretty robust amount of code to actually go through and analyze and look into this data set. But does it work? So let's jump into running it. it starts off by importing the libraries and then loading the CSV. We can actually check out the data set here. And then it moves into cleaning, where it looks like we ran into our first error. And we can tell this by this error message right here. And now I run into errors quite a bit. And there's a few ways you can go about tackling this. One, you can just highlight all your code, right click it and go to this Copilot button. And then from here, select fix this. Or you could select it all, type slash fix, and then provide a description of what's wrong here. But I like this button down here of fix using Copilot. It still uses that slash fix command, 
but it pastes in that error message that we got below, so that way Copilot knows what's going on. From here, it shows us the original code on the left, which is in red, and then that that we're fixing on the right. I'll be honest, this looks exactly the same code. So I'm gonna click this button of regenerate. And I had to press it a few times to actually get to a good one. So this isn't perfect. Now we could run around all day and try to get Copilot to fix this, but sometimes it takes an actual programmer that understands what's going on here to see what's wrong. And right now it's using a generic column name for a column name in order to search for and clean up. Basically column name, if we actually scroll up to the columns, does not exist. Uh -huh. Copilot hallucinated this. But there's a way we can fix this and actually set Copilot up for better success. There's multiple items being fed to the large language model behind Copilot. First is all that data in the editor, along with any prompts that you provide it. The other thing that can actually help with this are open tabs. So in this case, it probably would help to keep something like the data set open during this so we can see those different column titles and then generate it into here. Now all of this feeds into the context window and you can only send so many tokens. And if we look at our data set, there's a shit whack of tokens. And so it's not gonna send this all to the large language model, but I have a better idea instead. Going back to Kaggle, I can look and see that there's actually different notebooks that were used to analyze this data set. One being mine, of course. With this code downloaded, I can then put it into our project and then open it inside of our editor to then be used by this large language model. Yo, editor Luke here with some real talk. If you're gonna actually use somebody else's code to generate some new code, make sure you do the right thing and cite their sources. Don't be an asshole and not cite it. All right, back to real Luke. So let's try this again by generating this notebook now with this tab open. All right, so not so bad. We were able to get through a lot more of these things. Specifically, we're actually get through this data cleaning without getting any errors. Now, one thing we get caught up on was visualizing the data, which if you look at it, we actually did generate a graph but when it went to visualize the next graph, it generated an error. Let's try to fix this. Five minutes later. So I'll be honest, I gave up on troubleshooting this error that was going through. It couldn't actually fix it with Copilot. I could have figured it out through coding. At least I'm telling myself that. But I am finding that GitHub Copilot isn't necessarily the best when it comes to fixing errors. Nonetheless, I commented out all that different code that we had here that it was causing the error. And for visualizing the data, we have some really interesting results. One, we have a bar chart of all the different numerical columns. Then we have this pair plot showing how these different numerical columns actually can relate to each other. Now it's pretty cool that Copilot generated all this different code for this, but if you're new to maybe programming with Python, what the? you may need Copilot to explain some of this to you. This can be done by selecting any of the code and then using the slash command explain. In this case, we're looking at the data cleaning and it goes through and provides a lot of background on what are all the different steps it took and why it took it. Intermission Luke here. And going back to that error troubleshooting that we dealt with previously, this seems to be one of the biggest pain points that I've dealt with Copilot with working with it over the past year. I calculated the time that I spend coding and I find that the majority of it is spent fixing errors. And you don't have to take my word for it. Go to Stack Overflow and look at any problem there. Now, the team behind Copilot recently announced that they were upgrading their model and using the most advanced model from OpenAI, GPT-4. And when I use this model inside of ChatGPT, it typically gets my answers correct. Yet somehow in Copilot, it seems to still be getting this wrong. Well, if we investigate the logs behind this error message that we're trying to troubleshoot with it, we can see that GitHub Copilot chat, yeah, it does use GPT-4 sometimes, but also it reverts back to GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is not a bad model, but it's no GPT 4. But mainly, I feel kind of betrayed because Microsoft's telling me they're using GPT 4, but they're not necessarily using it all the time. Now, even though I have all these frustrations with Copilot, when I go to the 2023 developer survey and look at the top AI coding assistants, it's not even close. Copilot is the leader. Tab9 and Code Whisperer are the next two closest options. And if we look at this fancy visualization, we can see that actually people that use these two options are more switching to Copilot than vice versa. So I think it's pretty apparent that Copilot is the leader in this area right now. All right, so let's jump back in and finish this analysis. For this, I wanna analyze the title column. Wanna see what type of different jobs are in there. I commonly use this by just generating a comment. In Python, you note this comment by a hashtag at the beginning of it. It looks like it's gonna break us into the steps and it's gonna first count the frequency of those titles. I'm gonna press tab to accept this. And it gives me this code right here. And I can use a shortcut of option square bracket in order to sort through all the different recommendations. Now it's gonna move into the bar chart. If you press control 
enter, you'll then get a pop-up on the right-hand side that has multiple different suggestions. It should have up to 10. In this case, it looks like it has five. So let's run this code. And bam, we get this graph showing the top 10 roles with, as expected, data analyst at the top. Let's now get into the final step of generating that readme detailing what we did for this project. And I prompted generate text for a readme file detailing the contents of job analysis Python notebook. So this looks pretty good. It goes into what the contents are of the Jupyter Notebook itself, which I never had it actually do before, and then goes into some requirements and usage for it. I'm gonna go ahead and create that readme, and then from there, just copy and paste that over here. And now we have our readme that details all the different contents, requirements, and usage. Pretty good that I didn't have to write any of this, and it's just all right here given to me. And now we have a full project that we built in less than 10 minutes. I'm not gonna lie, looking back on using this tool over the past year, I wish I would have had this when I first started coding in order to speed up my workflow and help with troubleshooting all those issues that I run into. All right. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. With that, I'll see you in the next one.